Hi, Mr. Billa. Good to see you. Thank Hi, Rahul. You. Uh, pleasure to be here. Uh, good to see you all too. Can you hear me? Loud and clear. Okay. Thank great. you, sir, for joining us today. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming Mr. Billa to the Great Manager Awards 2021. Very pleased to also share that Mr. Billa has been named the Global Entrepreneur of the Year by the Indus Entrepreneurs. He is the only Indian industrialist to be given this award. This evening, we have a very special fireside chat planned with Mr. Billa. I would request Mervyn, the managing partner at People Business, to please welcome Mr. Billa and initiate the much awaited fireside chat. Thanks, Rahul. Good afternoon, Mr. Billa, and thank you so much. I'm, for, I'm yeah, hi. Thank you for so much for joining this uh, Great Manager Awards, and we welcome no, you. It's, it's truly a pleasure. Yeah. So before we start, I'm going to do a brief introduction for the audience. Uh, Mr. Birla is the chairman of, which you all know, of the multinational Aditya Birla Group. The group's legacy dates to over a century, and they're present in 36 countries across six continents. And 50% of the revenues come from overseas operations. So they're truly a global multinational. Group's turnover is 45 billion and valuation about 70 billion. Mr. Birla chairs the boards of all the group companies. And in the 25 years that he's been at the helm of the group, the group's turnover has increased 20 times. He has also been the architect of over 40 acquisitions in India and globally. And under his stewardship, the Aditya Birla Group enjoys a position of leadership from cement to chemicals, metals to textiles and apparels to financial services. He has also built a very successful meritocratic organization with 140,000 employees belonging to 100 nationalities. Outside the group, he has also held several positions as a director on the Central Board of Directors of Reserve Bank of India, chairman of the advisory committee by the Ministry of Company Affairs, and also on the Prime Minister's India's Advisory Council on Trade and Industry. He was also the first industrialist to be confirmed an honorary degree by the Institute of Company Secretaries in India. Mr. Birla is deeply engaged with educational institutions. He is the Chancellor of uh, BITS and also the Chairman of India's Premier Management Institute, Indian Institute of Management, Ahmedabad. Mr. Birla also serves on the London Business School's Asia-Pacific Advisory Panel and also constitutes a $15 million uh, scholarship program at LBS. Mm. A firm practitioner of the trusteeship model, Mr. Birla has institutionalized the concept of caring and giving at the ABG group. The group is involved in meaningful welfare-driven activities that impact the quality of weaker sections of society. So a big hand for Mr. Birla. Thank you. Yeah. I'm going to start Mr. Birla with a couple of questions. And uh, the first one is you started managing the ABG group at a relatively young age. So from your experience over the years, what should young professionals keep in mind as they manage the ups and downs of business? So, you know, one quality that comes to mind immediately, and I think it's a quality that, uh, you know, uh, we have all learned is very important uh, in the last two years uh, in the time of COVID is that of resilience. Resilience, I think, is a very important quality, um, you know, to be able to take, take the ups and downs, um, uh, an attitude of resilience, uh, of being able to make mistakes, learn from them, get up and start walking again, uh, and not your not let your failures, uh, you know, kind of uh, you know knock you over completely. Resilience, courage, I think, is important. Uh, courage is important, uh, you know, to be able to uh, step out of your comfort zone, to experience new experiences, to learn new things, to meet different kinds of people. Um, I think in, in times of uh, an up and down, uh, it's important also to stay committed uh, and to demonstrate that commitment and not waver in your commitment. Uh, it's very important that also people who work with you uh, sense authenticity and sense that your commitment uh, has remained completely unchanged uh, despite the ups and downs uh, that the business is uh, facing. I would also say that uh, you know, at the end of the day, it's my very firm belief that it's all about people. Um, and it's very important uh, uh, to be able to reach out to people in, in an authentic way and to plug into the hearts and uh, the minds of people and really understand what makes the organization uh, tick. So all of this put together, 
uh, i think uh, there's lots more than i can that i can say but uh, putting the situation in context being authentic reaching out to people uh, and being resilient uh, i think are very important uh, attributes would you be able to share for the audience what are the toughest one of the toughest challenges that you faced you know while taking the business to the current levels and you know what was the things that came into play while managing that lots of things so as you can imagine um, from being present uh, in four or five countries we're today present in about 40 45 countries so the multinationalization of the group uh, you know while it's thrilling it also has its own challenges mm. uh, because you have people of um, many more kinds of cultures who come in it becomes a much larger potpourri of cultures um uh, you also have uh, you know uh, there are nuances so we have a group uh, value system that is clearly articulated for example uh, one of our values is commitment uh, what does commitment mean in an indian context versus an anglo saxon context uh, can be very different so aligning people uh, the one glue that holds the group together saying some simple thing when we uh, I, i was saying that our values are kind of glue mm. uh, when we made acquisition the first one of the first thing we've done is uh, you know workshops on group values what do the values mean uh, for an employee what does non compliance look like uh and we realize that commitment is something that's understood in very different ways in different parts of the world uh so it's important to align people alignment is a very big uh, uh you know uh, uh, criteria in terms of when you're integrating so many different uh, uh organizations so many different uh, uh people from so many different cultures and nationalities uh it's also about you know many different things it's a growing organization uh, you need to constantly invest in people uh having a robust leadership pipeline is something that we've been uh, insidiously focused on in the last many years 15 years 20 years uh, because uh, it's important you know your your bandwidth uh, eventually is restricted by uh, the number of uh, people that you have uh, were like ready to take on leadership challenges so building leadership uh, investing in people has been a, a very big uh, area of uh, focus for us um you know it's it's about uh, gro- growing careers and growing opportunities for people uh, and we call ourselves uh, a world of opportunities that's our uh, sort of um, you know our employer uh, it's our peg as an employer uh, uh, which is true i mean we encourage our high talent high performing performing managers to take different roles uh, within the company over their career Uh, we talk about a three by three matrix, which is we ideally would like them to uh, be in three different businesses and three different kinds of roles. Um, so yes, I think people uh, is is always a challenge. Keep keeping people motivated, uh, continuously providing them with growth uh, opportunities. They need to believe that uh, you are very genuinely invested uh, in their growth. Uh, and then, of course, as you're growing the organization. you know um your your uh, scale uh, size is growing uh, you know very significantly that obviously comes with its own challenges but uh, i think that's also a lot of fun and uh, adrenaline pumping yeah following up on this question i personally also have a lot of ex lever colleagues who have joined and worked with the group for long and i know a lots of uh, professionals who have joined the group and they stay here on the group So, what is the glue or the that actually holds people back there? I think the fact that uh, <clears throat> we have great respect, we believe and respect for the individual. Uh, we are a very fair employer. We are a meritocracy, uh, which means that your own career path is decided by you, by your performance, by how committed you are to the group uh, or the business vision and values. Um, you don't really need a Uh, you know a champion for you in 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 the company in the organization uh it's completely your growth is completely based on your own performance on your own merit which i think is a huge positive uh for uh, for any bright uh, 
manager leader uh, and the fact that we deeply invest in people like i said uh, we believe in investing in people uh, so as to in- improve their own uh, you know enhance their own intrinsic worth as uh, professionals for sure uh, also i think that uh, we are highly delegated as an organization very high levels of authority uh, for people once they've sort of made a, made the cut in are at a certain level of seniority uh, and above a great amount of trust that we repose in people i think people sort of enjoy the fact that they you know um, work with a great degree of uh, independence of course within an organizational framework as would have to be the case uh, and they can be true entrepreneurs uh, within an, an, a corporate uh, context okay there's a lot of uh, digitization going on in the organizations so how do you think this is going to impact the businesses that you're in so i think that you know digitization is in different parts of the organization one is operational uh which is the easier part i think the part of digitization that's going to tr- truly uh, make uh, a difference is uh, the part that connects with the customer and how do you use the digitization in terms of acquiring new customers onboarding new customers uh you know staying with them through the customer life cycle servicing them better uh, you know understanding their continuing uh, changes in their needs Uh, providing them with solutions uh, i think that's the part that is a little more challenging it requires more thinking through more innovation uh, real insights into who your customer is and what uh, he or she is actually looking for uh, i think we are um, still learning uh, covid has been a great accelerator uh, and i think that uh, i would say that once we as an organization as a company make up our mind that we need to focus on something and you know uh, grow our competence there uh, scale our own skill sets there we tend to do that very quickly so i'd say i'm we are on a very sharp uh, learning curve is, is how i put it oh. you know you mentioned this before you know in terms of uh, with the number of locations you are in managing the intercultural context is very important but for managers who are at the local level today who aspire to actually manage globally and i think a lot of indians uh, the latest being geena nayar who has moved into chanel you know what is that switch that they need to make to me move from being at the local level to being able to manage at the global level so you know very broadly it's about performance it's about like i said alignment with uh, uh, the group's uh, uh, value system about uh, how well you lead people what your leadership uh, quotient uh, looks like beyond that i think we have uh, you know internal segways for people to move across companies across businesses uh, from overseas to india from india to overseas so i think uh, your performance your um, attitude your lead- leadership qualities your alignment with uh, the company the group uh, would very quickly uh, you know kind of throw you to the top in terms of put you on the radar of high performing high uh, potential uh, leaders uh, who always have the first uh, choice or who always are the first preference for uh, the most significant uh, assignment as you can imagine uh, so i think there is an inbuilt system uh, you need to just focus on your own performance uh, and i think that uh, the system will very quickly uh, spot you uh and uh, then you have a plethora of opportunities that open up what are the learnings from the pandemic because i think uh, the pandemic has taught us a lot both professionally and personally and uh, you know where can leaders do better in terms of anticipating and managing situations like this which i think is going to be quite fre- frequent in the future i think in a lot of changes uh, uh, requires much more seamless working and i was very happy to see that uh, our teams really pulled uh, in together in the same direction across businesses across functions um in a very short uh, time that was uh, you know allowed to people to switch over from uh, work from office to work from home uh, and that truly you know what truly stood out was the commitment that people had uh, without which they couldn't have made the switch uh, you know so seamlessly 
so being able to work seamlessly uh, i think is uh, one quality that's very important uh, when you're a leader you know it's different to be able to inspire people when you're meeting with them you're in the same office uh, you're sitting together across the table to be able to inspire people virtually uh, is far more difficult it requires a different uh, level of communication skills of leadership skills um a communication pattern change quite significantly we, we learned how to communicate uh, from one to a much larger group uh, i reached out to almost 12000 senior colleagues across, across the group twice over in this one and a half two years uh, period uh, i i think it's about uh, it requires it's it's tougher because it requires uh, you to deliver while it's not being uh, together you know there's some power in sitting across the same floor or in, Also, same in the same office, we can just walk across, talk to each other. Uh, doing that virtually, obviously, as we all uh, learned, is far more difficult. Uh, so I think uh, again, it shows up the level of commitment. If you want to do something, you can do it. You can find ways uh, around problems. Um, you need to make sure that uh, you have the learning agility uh, to learn these new skill sets. That itself is is very important. since you started quite young have there been any leaders who have inspired you or you looked up to when you were actually in the early stages of your career and why so you know i've had a uh, in my own family i've been blessed to have uh, quite uh, you know uh, stellar uh, leaders uh, larger than life whether it was my great grandfather mr jidi birla my grandfather uh, mr bk birla my father aditya birla so they and and since i've sort of been seeing them in action since a very young age uh, i've always been inspired by them i've learned or tried to emulate different things from the three of them each have been uh, you know around in very different periods of time uh, you know for india as a country uh, my great grandfather pre independence uh, my uh, father my great my grandfather in a time where uh frugality was so important uh you know the role of the government was so important in such an insulated isolated country my father at a time when the uh, economy started to liberalize and open up and, you know he looked overseas became the first uh, indian entrepreneur to make very large uh, significant impact uh, overseas uh i think uh, that the one uh, leader from outside who has been very inspiring to me has been jack welch of uh, general electric i think he uh was at the helm for 15 20 years i can't remember that uh i i haven't didn't get the chance to meet him but read a lot about him uh you know got to know a lot about him with people from people who worked closely with him a very strong leader uh, to be able to uh, communicate a point of view to so many people to get them to align to that point of view um and like i say to make the elephant dance uh for, for such a large organization and pull people together in one direction uh to work on talent the way that he did uh, uh and to constantly be in a state of uh, rejuvenation uh, i thought were were very inspiring qualities of uh, jack as a leader uh, i've always drawn, drawn inspiration from that besides that uh, some similarity in organization structure in the sense that g has also been a conglomerate like we at the atikala group are uh, so i could uh, a lot of what he did uh, i could resonate with uh, but it was more the man that uh, i thought was uh, a very interesting uh, person quite uh, his own person his own brand of leadership that was quite charming yeah his book was very inspiring uh, i have read it too Yeah. we will mr birla this is not so much about work <clears throat> and i am also a parent and i know you know when your son first came and said he wants to pursue cricket and your daughter came and uh, spoke to you about becoming a musician and i have listened to her videos you know what was your reaction because i know indian parents tend to be very tuned into you know following in their family footsteps but your children wanted to take a different but so how did you react and what are your thoughts on that so i was quite taken aback uh, to be honest mohan there's a lot of change between 
our generation and the next generation i don't think we would have even imagined to do uh the things that we just didn't have that exposure on the all those opportunities uh but i think you know it's about that adaptability as cook to them my wife uh had had a much more sort of uh, was much more inclined to let them do follow their passion so it took a conversations a few conversations uh um, between my, my wife and me between all of us with the kids uh and we both felt that uh, you know it's important to follow your passion uh, and this was a great point in time in their lives wouldn't get the opportunity to do it again uh and i must say that uh, my son has now joined me at work about 2 years ago my daughter right from the beginning runs her own microfinance company by the name of spatanza uh, i think that uh, they have both learned greatly from pursuing their passions and grown as people um to me what's most important is uh, the value system uh, and also the work ethic uh, you know i think it's very important to me uh, and us as a family both of these are very important uh, uh, issues and i'm very proud that they have uh, done really well on both of these counts um, so in retrospect whilst uh, it was a little intimidating to start with uh, i think that uh, they've grown tremendously as individuals um you know uh, uh, through ma- mo- music in the case of my daughter and cricket in uh, the case uh, of uh, my son you can't i can't uh, sing for them and i can't play cricket for that for them so obviously they understand the value of hard work and talent and and merit um i think that is very important for parents to allow our children to follow their dreams i don't think you can do well unless you're are passionate about what you're doing uh we also need to recognize that they have many more opportunities today some might be very unconventional mm-hmm. but if they have uh you know a complete perspective uh, on the trade offs that they're making uh, in the choices that they make i think we owe it to them uh, to this generation to follow their dreams thanks uh, just uh, you know there's so much concern on climate climate change environment and sustainability so what is your group's thoughts in terms of addressing those so very important uh, i mean we are uh, uh, you know sort of signatories to all the important pacts uh, every industry that we are in or every business we are in has different uh, regulatory requirements um, most of our businesses at least the larger ones the manufacturing ones uh, put out a sustainability report uh, for at least last two or two, two or three years where they clearly laid out their targets uh of uh you know uh whatever the parameters might be in, in that particular business or manufacturing unit uh so total commitment um, uh, we see this as something that uh you know needs to be done uh, as much as we need to make a profit uh it's as important uh it's not negotiable and i think there's very clear understanding on on that across the organization okay thank you sir over to you rahul thank you we will again and gentlemen we are in the final phase of the fireside chat with mr virla uh, mervin i'd request you to please continue i just have two questions mr virla the first one is you know you have such a huge span of control in terms of what you do how do you maintain your work life balance um so to be very honest not not very well um uh, something that uh, it's a moving target i keep trying uh but i think that uh, you know i outside of work uh, uh, our, our children are in a phase where they require active uh, involvement of both the parents because they are at a point in time when they're choosing their careers and the future uh, you know paths uh so a lot more time with the children Uh, with my children uh work hours remain unchanged uh, uh but uh, you know the good thing uh, I, i about me if i can be fair to myself is that i don't carry my work home um so once i'm home i'm home you know totally mentally physically um but you know this is a challenge uh, as work grows and expands uh you know the challenge becomes uh, even tougher uh, you know the big 
positive for me is that we have such outstanding people and such outstanding teams and we rely on them uh, completely uh, for uh, the execution for uh, the intellectual capability and ability um, and I, I think that that in many ways is ours and my biggest strength okay so given this have you managed to focus on any hobbies um no i used to shoot at one time and there's a range close to the office but uh, you know uh, to be really honest um uh, i haven't really uh, focused on any hobby uh, uh you know work life has been very intense and uh, i kind of regret that but i think uh, there's enough time to catch up yeah i'm sure thanks and uh... I think we'll move on to the last 10 awards and thank you very much, Mr. Billa. It's been a pleasure. A pleasure. You. Yeah.